I do not understand why people keep saying women shouldn't do the ketogenic diet. Women, menopausal women shouldn't be doing keto. It makes no sense to me. And I try to prove myself wrong. But the deeper yeah. I go into it, the more I realize that that is protective to the brain if you're willing to accept the call of either fasting or cut out carb the, the refined carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. I've even wondered about exogenous ketones and if there is a, a, a place in which menopausal women can use exogenous ketones for to get all those benefits, but not necessarily have to go into mm -hmm. a ketogenic state. What are your thoughts on that? I, I well, in addition to just saying uh, stating a hearty amen, I would I, I wholeheartedly agree. I don't know where I think sometimes I think sometimes people are a little too eager to show differences between the sexes. Of course, we are very different. Yeah. Uh, and yet when it comes to certain metabolic processes and metabolic realities, we're not. We are the same species, and despite some obvious differences, which are real, I don't know of any reason why a postmenopausal woman wouldn't thrive in a ketogenic diet, yep. especially for the reasons you mentioned, where, you know, having seen my, my beloved grandma die with Alzheimer's disease for 10 years, it is sobering. And if my darling wife ever reported or ever, ever had any kind of evidence of just, boy, I really feel like I'm kind of missing a step here. I'm forgetting things. Oh my gosh. I mean, she already kind of follows a low carb diet, but I wouldn't hesitate for a second to say, you know what? We're getting some exogenous ketones Yep. and let's start, let's make sure you start drinking them every day. Ab yep. Without hesitation. I, the nice thing about exogenous ketones is they're getting better they're getting, yep. they're tasting better. They're tasting There's different better. different versions out there. Yeah. And the, as that continues to, yeah. as the field gets bigger, then the prices will start to come down because they can be a little high. But no, I mean, for every reason you mentioned, in addition to ones we haven't even gotten into, like our evidence showing higher metabolic rates in fat cells from humans mm. that are in ketosis, there are a lot of reasons. The anti-inflammatory effects of the ketones, yes. the reductions in oxidative stress, and the enhancement of antioxidant enzymes. So, yeah, for all these reasons and more. Indeed, these are reasons that play into my own motivation. For as, sure. As a, a guy who's knocking on 50, I, I want to be healthy. I am particularly worried about cancer because of a family history. And then I'm worried about Alzheimer's disease. Because it mm. was so terrifying seeing my dear Baba, my grandma, die with this. And I don't want to touch those. Let me die from anything else, but not those yeah. two. Yeah. Or push them off as long as possible. And ketones are therapeutic for both. Good enough for me. At the same time, it's going to help me be lean. Yep. All right. Good. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know, it's funny. My, my dad, my sweet dad, who is very blunt, He's 88 years old. And when I was going through my perimenopausal years and studying the fasting and really understanding ketones, there was, I don't know, some point about two years into my fasting journey, my dad looked at me and I must have been about 47 at the time. He goes, you know what? I, ne I never realized you were so smart. And I was like, <laughs> hmm, I'm not really sure how to take that. But I think what now that I've thought about it, is I learned in the back half of my 40s to get power my brain on ketones. And whenever I needed to learn something, anytime I was giving a, a talk, anytime I needed maximum brain power, I made sure I switched over into that fuel source. Yeah. And we've seen the same thing in our community, yet there's, I don't know who's driving the anti-keto uh, movement for women, but it really is doing a disservice because ketones are so, from my research as well, so massively important for for both men and women. So yeah, they they really are. I mean, it's if even if a person, like you said a moment ago, even if a person decided, you know what, I don't want to do low carb for reasons that w elude me, I would still say, well, find some way to get some ketones because your brain and the rest of your body is going to benefit. This is an energy source that our modern diet has made all but gone because we eat 70% of all calories come from carbs and we eat six or seven times a day because that's what we are told to do. We're told to eat yeah. all these little snacks all day long. It is just nonsense. And that means all day long we're, we're sugar burning. 
because our insulin is high and because our insulin is high, we're not fat burning. And that means we're never making ketones because you only make ketones when you're burning fat. And so most people, I mean, and, and what a, what a tragedy, just one final comment for me on this. Like I think about the person who's descending into Alzheimer's disease, one of the most scary and sobering disorders. Mm. Mm -hmm. And throughout this descent, it's like, it's like a, people may be familiar with the rhyme of the ancient mariner, water, water everywhere, nor any drop to drink is the sailor um, bemoaning the fact that he's surrounded by an ocean of water and yet he can't drink it as he's dying from thirst. That's like the brain saying the body I'm filled with glucose. There's glucose all over glucose, glucose everywhere, nor any drop to drink. It can't use it. Even if a person's mm -hmm. hyperglycemic, because they're so insulin resistant, the brain can't get it. And yep. it's crying out for some little life preserver in the form of ketones. And yet, yep. because of the hyperglycemia and the associated hyperinsulinemia, they're not making any ketones. And so the brain is drowning in a sea of energy that it can't use. Oh, so, that was such a good visual description. And I, could, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more. 